Hello, Facebook friends. Greetings from International TEFL Academy here in Chicago. Glad you're tuning in with us tonight or this afternoon or morning, wherever you are. Today, we are going to be chatting with our alumni ambassador, Mira Winograd in Costa Rica. I'm your co-host tonight. I'm Ashley. I'm one of the admissions advisors here, if you haven't seen some of our past Facebook Lives. And we're excited that you're joining us. Feel free in the comment section below to type in any questions, comments, excitements about going abroad throughout our conversation tonight. And we will be taking questions from those of you out there. So I want to introduce Mira, our very special guest and ITA alumni ambassador. Mira, tell us a little bit about where you're from and what you were doing before you went down to Costa Rica to teach English. Um, okay, hi. Um, nice to meet you. Um, so I'm from Colorado. Before I was teaching English, um, after I graduated, I like took a year off in between college and grad school, and I like worked at Boys and Girls Club and was like a I worked at a Marriott as a front desk person. Then I went to Chicago actually, and I lived there for a year and a half. And I got my master's in sociology at the University of Chicago. Um, and it was like, I, I did this grad pro pro program that felt really like ivory tower. And it was like really fancy. And I really missed like working with kids. And I really missed kind of like being more on the ground and like working with people and like trying to like better their lives in some sort of like more tangible way. And also I'd always wanted to study abroad and I had never studied abroad before. So then I started like looking into like possibilities to kind of like do that and feel like I was doing something to like impact somebody's life. And that's how I fell into uh, TEFL. So that's so awesome. It's one of those things where it's like, it's never too late to go teach abroad. Like you get into this master's program or this job. And sometimes you think, oh, is, it, is it too late for me to do it? And it, it isn't, you know, there's yeah. so much reciprocity in it. You get this amazing adventure and experience yeah. internationally working, and then you're giving back to these local communities. So yeah. awesome. Exactly. Yeah, awesome. to sleep. What, you know, what made you other than kind of feeling stuck after your master's program decide like, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to leave. And, and why Costa Rica? Um, I guess like I kind of like deep down, I knew that if I didn't do this kind of a broad experience, I was really going to regret it. And I was also like kind of in this space in my life. I was about like 25 or 26. And I was like, okay, either I'm going to like stay with this guy that I've been with for a really long time and kind of like do like this this life that seemed like pretty normal and like this thing I was just kind of like gonna fall into or I kind of felt like this was the time to like make a change um, because I didn't do it in college so this is kind of like the last chance like I just had like a lot of pressure on myself and so I was just like I'm gonna do it and because I signed up for Temple and like actually put down some money that kind of like pushed me along to do it because I was terrified for like at least eight months before I did it. I never thought I would live abroad. And I was like, what am I doing? This is the worst mistake of my life. Like I regret it so much, but I was like, but I already spent 300 bucks. So like, I have to do it now because I like put down this money. Um, and, and so I don't know, I just, it was just something like deep down that I decided to just like go with my instincts and just like take what I felt and just like go with it instead of like kind of ignoring that little voice that maybe I had ignored for too long. And I just like really pushed myself to, to take the the jump and it, it wasn't easy and it was it was hard and scary but um I don't know I just knew I knew that I would regret it so I feel like that was like the big motivation and the reason I chose Costa Rica is because I really am into nature I'm um, being from Colorado and I love animals and also Costa Rica isn't that far away from Colorado and I knew my family would be able to come visit me or if I hated it it wouldn't be too expensive to like buy a ticket home and, and just leave um, so that's kind of why I chose Costa Rica. Also, I had studied some Spanish in high school and college, and I wanted to like try to develop those skills even more because I'm really interested in working like for a nonprofit or working in some sort of way with immigrants or something. So I knew that like that would be a skill that, that would be useful for later on in like future endeavors. So yeah, Costa Rica. <laughs> awesome. It is one of those things where at first it's like, you're doing the research, it's overwhelming. If you haven't been abroad before, it's like this one moment I feel like that for a lot of people happens where, yeah, it's gonna be scary. Anytime you step out of your comfort zone, you're gonna be nervous, but there's like this mix of nerves and excitement that are this perfect blend. And then you know, yeah. okay, this is gonna change my life. I'm doing something that doesn't follow that scripted path, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yep, so that, so yeah, I just, yeah, that's what happened. 
Yeah. I also lived in Colorado and I taught in Costa Rica. So I think we have a lot in common. I'm excited to learn more. Um, okay. Which TEFL course did you take? Fill us in on what TEFL course you took and what you thought. So I took the online one, even though I was living in Chicago. Um, I was going to grad school, so I like didn't have extra money. And like, I mean, obviously I had some extra money, but the online course was cheaper, um, and I wouldn't have to commute into the the place because I was already commuting so much. I was like, no, I just like want to do something at home because I know I will do it every night. Um, so yeah, I chose to take the online one, but I did go into Chicago and visit the facility and talk to my advisor one on one to who kind of like you know told me more about it and like settled some of my nerves and like shared a lot of experiences that other people had been through and like how amazing it was and got me like really psyched to do it. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, oh my gosh, I'm working a full-time job or I'm going to grad school, how am I gonna take another course? So online class definitely sounded like the right fit for you and glad you were able to come see the HQ here, which is uh, always fun. Now, where in Costa Rica are you based? Tell us a little bit about where you are. Okay, so right now I'm in Monteverde. Uh, Ooh, Monteverde is like, it's, it's a mountain. And it's like, it's very like popular. It's like a huge tourist destination. It's a very small rural town. It's it's in the province um, called Punta Arenas, and there's seven provinces in Costa Rica. Um, when I first taught here, I was living, and then I decided I wanted to do something. I'm here, like more in the rural country where you step outside of your apartment and, there, and the forest is like right there. And, and, you know, I walk out of my classroom and there's like, hi, I'm in, butterflies and hummingbirds. So I decided to go for that kind of experience the second time around. Nice, yeah, Monte Verde is gorgeous. Granted, I haven't been to Costa Rica in 15 years since I taught there, so it's been a little while, but I did go up to the cloud forest, and for someone like yourself who loves nature, like couldn't be in a better spot. I think it's like 5% of the world's biodiversity is in Costa Rica. Maybe somebody fact check exactly. that. I think that's right. Yeah, I think it's three or five. It's three or five. Hot yeah. spot, for sure. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So you already shared this. Isn't your first year teaching abroad? Can you like back check a little bit and share with us a bit more about your timeline since you first, you know, started teaching abroad? Sure. So when I when I first arrived, I worked um, in Aredia, which is 30 minutes outside of San Jose. Um, and I worked at an international language school. And I mostly taught adults, and this was specifically ESL. So um, I was teaching, you know, present perfect and past simple and and all those sorts of things. And my age range was like usually from 16 to like 65. And I did a couple of kids classes, but it was mostly adults. And um, some days I only taught for three hours and some days I taught for six hours. But it was never like a full, like normal, like U.S., like, a nine to five gig. It was like, it was different because it just depended on how many classes you would get. Um, and so that was like, it was pretty cool for the first year of living abroad because I was able to like spend time with people and get to know people and kind of develop this community. And also it enabled me to like, just really travel like crazy. And I went all around Costa Rica and I traveled across Central America as well because I had so, I had so much like free time compared to what I had been doing in the States. Any favorite spots when you were traveling through Costa Rica, like must-sees for anybody? I mean, yes, there's like a lot. Even though Costa Rica is, is small and you can get to like a lot of different places in a short amount of time, I've been here for like total almost two and a half years and I still haven't seen all of it. But I would, my favorite, like most memorable places that I've been are definitely um, Corcovado National Park. It's down in the south. And so Costa Rica has like three or 5% biodiversity and Corcovado is the place in Costa Rica where the biodiversity is the most condensed. So it's like you, and it's very like, it feels a little bit more untouched than other places in Costa Rica. Um, the forest is like just beautiful and you can go on this hike where you, where you go through the forest and then you can just come out at like all these different spots and there's like a new different beach. And it's, it's like really gorgeous. There's flocks of scarlet macaws that fly over. Um, so I think that that's one of the coolest places. Also, there's a mountain here called Chiripo, and um, it's like their tallest peak. It's not quite a 14er like in Colorado, but I think it's like 13,000 feet. And so me and my best friend who I met here in Costa Rica, um, kind of like a month before we left the first time, we climbed Chiripo, and it was just amazing. The landscape changes like seven times, and um, 
you sleep at this base camp when you when you when you get to the base camp it took us like 13 hours and it was so hard you sleep there they like feed you and give you food and then you walk to the peak in the morning and see the sunset and the reason that felt so cool is because it wasn't like super touristy like most of the people we met who were doing this hike were costa ricans so it just felt like you were doing something that like a lot of costa rican people think is cool too um so i absolutely loved that and um Tortuguera oh, yeah. in the north is in the north on the caribbean side and that's beautiful it's um considered like costa rica's little amazon because it's a river um and they have manatees live in the river they're really rare but there are some um so yeah i've been to like tons of different places um here but i would say so all of them are memorable but like maybe those are the top three well you've managed to hit a lot of spots in your time down there already you've already added a few to my list that i haven't been yeah, to yeah. so definitely thanks for sharing about all those new little niche areas and for those of you who are just joining us on facebook you haven't missed too much we are talking with our alumni ambassador mira winograd down in monteverde costa rica she's been teaching down there for a while she shared a little bit about her experience if you want to backtrack but we're going to talk a little bit more about the school that you're teaching at now mira so share a little bit about that school and how your past experiences led you to get into that opportunity Okay, so my school now is a nonprofit, um, and it's like uh, environmentally focused, and it is definitely just, it's like a private school in Costa Rica, but it's, it's totally different than the school I worked at in um, Aradia because it's like, it's just like an actual Costa Rican school. Um, my, the, my other coworkers are international, but also many, like um, they call them, they're called Ticos here, many Tico teachers as well. So I kind of like get that, that that experience of working more like in a costa rican like i don't know if pedagogy is the right word but like costa rican environment um and i would say that the reason i got this job was because so it's kind of like a chain of events so i worked in heredia the reason i got the job in heredia is because i got my TEPL certificate and then i decided to go home to kind of see what the heck i'm doing because i stayed for way longer than i thought i was going to and my sister is getting married and i'm a twin so i wanted to be there to like go through everything with her. So I got a job at a charter school in Denver because of my experience in Heredia. And I worked at a middle school for a Title I school in Denver for a year. And then because of that teaching experience, um, I was hired at Monteverde at the La Creativa Cloud Forest School because I'd had that experience teaching kids and like being like a full-time teacher, um, which is what I'm doing now. Wow, talk about the butterfly effect and actual yeah. butterflies now surrounding you. That is yeah. awesome. <laughs> well, very cool. So I've heard you have some pretty incredible co-teachers from all around the world. Tell us a little yeah. bit more about like who you're working with down there. Okay, so I work with um, like the art teachers from Spain. Um, there are like people from all over the United States. Somebody's from uh, Mississippi. Other people are from Nebraska. Uh, from New York. There's a lot of people from New York actually who come here and I feel like a lot of people from like big cities want like the direct opposite experience. So they yeah. choose Monteverde because it's like, Monteverde is like a very different place. It is it is nothing like New York. So I feel like a lot of New Yorkers come here. Um, the social worker who's a good friend of mine, um, I'm using his apartment right now to do this. Uh, he's from Nicaragua. So just like a lot of different people. I have a teaching assistant who's with me all day which is amazing and she's Costa Rican. So I've really gotten to know kind of like Costa Rican women and like hear a lot of their stories and my co-teacher is Costa Rican as well. So yeah, a lot of different people. That's awesome that you've been able to interact with so many different people. And I wanna hear a little bit more about the classes you teach. Do you have like a favorite group of students or a favorite class that you're teaching right now? So I teach third and fourth grade um, and I do math and English and I like, I love all of my kids, but third grade is just seems to be a really special class. Um, these kids are just honestly like they're like I don't want to say because I'm sure there's there's kids in the states who are super sweet, but these kids just seem like really young. It's like they're able to stay kids a lot longer than maybe we are able to in the states, and it's especially obvious when the kids from the United States come and join the class because I'm just like God. My Costa Rican kids are so innocent and sweet and adorable, and all the girls wear like unicorn headbands and the boys always want you to like give them hugs and like you're just it's just they're just the the best and they're constantly drawing me pictures and love notes and i'm hanging them on my wall and compared to my experience at the title one school last year it's like 
it's just a different world. It's they're different kids and they just play all the time. They live in this beautiful forest. They they really just like they let them be kids for like a really long like a, a lot longer than we do in the States. I just feel like people grow up faster in the States than they do here. I love that. It makes me realize that my experience down there 15 years ago wasn't so different because yeah, I felt like all of my students appreciated the ability to learn English and to be in my class so much more than many of the students I've interacted with here in the States, perhaps. Um, and I'm you know, not too far from San Jose, you know, outside of Alajuela, but Monteverde, you know, a little bit more rural, foresty. What's the community like in Monteverde? What do people do for fun? What are people in that area like? Um, so people in this area really, they, like, they're very sweet. Um, they like they'll help you out. I stayed the first, for the first month that I got here, I lived in this lady's house and you know, wow. she was so nice and welcoming and like helped me find things. And um, I've made some Costa Rican friends who are also very nice and generous and welcoming. Um, um, because it's a rural town, I feel like um, people here like can be, they have like a bit more an an anti antiquated ideas about some things. Um, and like, I, I don't know, like, like, Things seem old to hear. Things are more old fashioned. Ways of thinking are more old fashioned, especially in the older generation. Um, also, because it's such a small town, everybody knows everybody. And so everybody talks about everybody. So that can, so like, have, sure. <laughs> it can, yeah, it can like, have some challenges if you are young and like, don't can't go out to San Jose. So you have to go out here. Then, you know, maybe you see parents at the bar and it's like it can be like awkward. Um, so I would say that that's one kind of downfall of, of living in such a small town. But the upside of it is that whenever I leave, you know, my apartment to go on a hike or go explore something like, you know, I know the taxi driver. I wave to my kids in the grocery store. They come up running to give me hugs. Like it's like you you know people and people know you here. So even though it feels sometimes like a magnifying glass, it goes both ways where sometimes people know too much. But also you feel like a part of the community and it's like, oh, so, like. It's like you feel, I don't know, known. That's all that I know how to say. <laughs> yes, kind of like yeah. small town America. Anytime you're you're living in a, a smaller area, people are gonna get to know you, especially if you're the gringa amongst you know the yeah. Tico community, yeah. um, which is kind of fun. You're always yeah. like a little celebrity to some extent. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm curious. Tell us a little bit about like how you found your apartment. What that's like, the living situation down there. So it can be really tricky because it's such a touristy area. People here would rather rent out their little apartments or cabinas to Airbnb -ers because they will pay more. Um, so there was, there's a lady at my school who's supposed to help you with these kinds of things, but because it can be so tricky, sometimes you have to like wait for like a few weeks, a few months to find a good place. And so that's kind of why I stayed at this homestay was waiting to find a place. And, but the way I found my apartment was actually just from word of mouth, like, people know that you're looking because you tell them that you're looking and they're like, oh, my brother just has an apartment opening up or I know my cousin has a thing. And so let me give you their number. And so me and a friend like came and checked out this area and it's like the cheapest one we could find. It's not like the nicest and it's like, but it can be really pricey here as well because of the tourist element. So if you want to like save any money at all, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm taking the tiny studio apartment because it's just me and, and it's, and it's fine. And I can like, leave and go to my friends' houses and everything like that. But um, so I'd say finding apartments is, is really uh, word of mouth a lot of the time. Yeah, the referral system down there, stuff travels so fast as soon as yeah. you put the word out amongst your community or even in the alumni Facebook group for Costa Rica. I feel like everybody's always sharing all sorts of tips. It's hard to keep up with that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. It's like, it's like you might be freaking out, like where am I gonna live? But nah, you'll find a place. Yeah. Well, I, it was interesting to hear you talk a little bit about, you know, the experience living in the more traditional, you know, smaller area of Monteverde compared to your experience in Andalusia. So tell us a little bit about what you would consider the advantages and disadvantages of both locations. Like if somebody's thinking, hmm, maybe do I want to go to a larger city in Costa Rica or what might be the benefits of going to somewhere like Monteverde? Okay. Um, so I would say the benefits of living in Monteverde are if you want to be in like a really beautiful area, then like, for example, when I first got to Aredia, like my, I'd, I'd never been to Costa Rica before. So in my mind, Costa Rica, trees, green, nature, and I get to Aredia and I was staying in this hotel and I was like, 
like there's no grass. There's no even grass. I don't even see a tree. Like I, I was just like, I was totally shocked. So yeah. um, in Aredia, it can be like really loud and really noisy. It's not like a very pretty city. There's pretty parts. And now I love Aredia because it's like my first home here. But when I first got there, I was not impressed. Um, living here, there's trees everywhere. It's super green, beautiful sunsets. You know, I can walk everywhere and get to, you know, hikes that people pay money to, to come and vacation at. Um, but there's no movie theater here. There's no mall. Um, the, the restaurants and the cafes tend to be a little bit pricier. You do get like the local discount and they tend to be really nice to teachers who are teaching their kids. So you can find deals in a lot of places. But um, if you're feeling really bored, like when I first came here and I didn't like have friends or anything, I was just like, what do I do? Like, you know, normally in a city, I would like go to a museum or go to a movie or, you know, things like that. And that's not really possible here. Um, so a benefit of living in a bigger city is you see more faces. There's more things to do cultural wise. It's easier to find things here. You just kind of have to get settled down and, and start making connections. And then you find the things to do. You start hanging out with your group of friends. You know, last weekend I went to a ballet put on by this tiny little uh, school here that I knew nothing about, but now I know because my kids invited me, you know? Um, so it's just, it's just different. It's just completely different. It's just two different worlds. Yeah. Yeah. Easier to get, you know, networked in, in that small Monteverde community, a lot more, you know, word of mouth. And yeah. then you get to, like that big city bustling. Like it's, it's really neat that you've had the opportunity to, to work in both and really see that contrast and yeah. travel a lot around the country. Yeah. Um, you know, Costa Rica is definitely one of the most popular locations for our alumni and those interested in teaching in Latin America in general. You know, they've heard about it, they've heard it's a great destination, but what advice do you have for somebody who's thinking like, do I want to go to Spain or do I want to go to Costa Rica? Like, do I want to go to Asia? Or do I want to go to Costa Rica? Like, why is Costa Rica so great? Like, what would you advise somebody on why it's the spot to be? Um. Like, I just, I feel like Costa Rica, if it's your first time living abroad, um, it's Costa Rica feels a little bit more like home. And I, and I know that that's like a point of like tension or even anger sometimes for Costa Ricans who feel like their culture is being overtaken or being Americanized. But that can be a benefit if it's your first time living somewhere else, because a lot of people here do speak English. Things feel like home here. Like, it's not super, it's like, for example, this last summer I traveled to Thailand and when I got off the plane in Thailand, I was like, I am in a different <laughs> country. Like I am far away. And here it feels a little bit less like that. Um, and I'm not, to, it's not to say Costa Rica doesn't have a culture. It totally does, but it's not as obvious or as like prevalent to like the naked eye, the second you get off the plane type of situation. Um, but also if you're a nature lover, there is nothing but nature here and maybe not in the city, but even around the city, like even when I was living in Aredia, you know, a friend of ours showed us this hike, Sarah Dantas. And we would, me and my friend would go there every week just to like see the woods and the trees. And, you know, there's beautiful places everywhere. You just kind of have to stay there and get to know them. Um, also, Costa Rica is pretty easy to travel around. Yes, sometimes the bus can be stuck for hours or it's like super hot on the bus or something like that. But you can get, like I've traveled to so many places here. And that's because it's a small country and they have buses that go to a lot of different areas. You can rent cars, like you have the beach, you have the mountains, you have the jungle. Um, it's it's a beautiful country and the people are really, really welcoming and, and friendly. And you can make a community here. There's a lot of people here who are curious about exploring and are curious about differences. And, and I'm sure that's like anywhere, you know, I'm sure that's like anywhere, but, but it's definitely true here as well. Um, and, I don't know. I, I, you know, I loved Costa Rica so much that I went home and then I was like, I was not ready to leave. And like, now I'm back, <laughs> you know? So it's like, I definitely, I, I love Costa Rica. And even if somebody were to go to Aredia, like when my parents came and visited me, they were like, um, why are you living here? And it's like, it's like, if you were my age and if you came here and you fell in love with it, I don't know. You just fell in love. You just fell in love. Even with the not touristy, not like destination, you know, places in Costa Rica, you can really easily fall in love with, with this place. Yeah, that really rings true to me from my experience too. And what I tell a lot of the students who work with here is that it is a very easy destination as like a first time abroad experience. 
There's so many, you know, universities there. There's a lot of expats be at like yoga retreats or surf camps and all those kinds of things that it, it's a nice transition when compared to other spots that might feel like, oh my God, crazy, crazy culture shock. Yeah. Um, so of the places I've been in Latin America, I totally agree with you on that. Yeah. Um, and I like, I need to go back now. I'm like, it's been 15 years. I'm going to see you soon, hopefully. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great place. I love it. Awesome. Well, I'm guessing some people probably have questions about like how you're doing this. Like, do you speak Spanish? How much language do you need to know to be able to get around? That's probably something people are wondering about out there. Okay. So um, when I first got here, I had like extremely basic Spanish um, at my school in Intercultura. All of my, um, obviously I was teaching English, so I was speaking English all the time, but like all the meetings and everything were always in English. Um, people in bigger cities tend to know English really well. So I like became friends and with um, some Costa Rican people and we usually spoke in English, which was frustrating sometimes because I'm like, I want to learn Spanish, but it's also <laughs> nice when, when you can, you know, have a conversation and get to know people. Um, now living in Monteverde, um, I would say that my Spanish has gone a lot better because one, I stayed in a homestay for a month and a half and we spoke in Spanish all the time. We ate dinner together. Um, also my co-teachers, yeah, Costa Rican and she speaks Spanish. So when we have parent teacher conferences, I, I tend to speak in Spanish. Our meetings are in Spanish. We, we like have somebody translating like sometimes, but like, you know, meetings get intense sometimes where people are just like talking blah, blah, blah. And sometimes the translation doesn't always happen. So I would say now living in the more rural area, Spanish is a lot more important than it was in Heredia. And it's also a lot better to be learning here because you are forced to use it a lot more than I was ever forced in Heredia. Gotcha. So super doable because you're only using English in the classroom, but then if you like really want to assimilate and experience the culture, yeah. and like maybe move a little more rural, yes. some language class is probably going to be a benefit. Definitely. Definitely. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, I did hear you, hear you mention earlier that you're a twin and we didn't talk about it, but how, what was it like? I know people have, Twins are very close typically. What was it like yeah. leaving your twin, leaving your family, or people who are nervous about going abroad and maintaining relationships back home? What's that been like? I was really nervous. I was just a wreck, anyways. Um, <laughs> I was like having nightmares of like coming to this like gray place that like had no color. I was just having crazy, like crazy amount of fear. And um, I was also really sad thinking about leaving my sister, but but this wasn't the first time that we had lived apart because I moved to Chicago. That was the first time. Um, my family was happy for me because they wanted me to like go do this adventure. They knew I'd been wanting to do it for a while. Um, but you know, we really missed each other, but I feel like with Skype, like you can talk to them every day. Me and my sister talk all the time. We're always sending, we like have this competition because she lives in a really beautiful area in Colorado. So she'll like take all these like beautiful pictures of like what she sees every day and send them to me. And I'll be like, taking pictures of the forest and of like the, the monkey I saw. And, and, you know, we have this like a little competition of whose life is cooler. Um, <laughs> I would say it's pretty tied. Um, yeah. And, you know, she, she's visited me twice. My, my mom has visited me twice. My dad came like, because it's not too far away and it's pretty affordable. You can find cheap tickets when it's not like Christmas. Um, the, my family was able to come and we had some, you know, great vacations from it. And my sister was able to come and meet my friends and, and you know, I, my friends now have some of them have moved away, and and it's like living here has like opened up like all these new relationships and all these new potentials to travel. And I, I don't know, like yeah, you're gonna miss your family, but your family loves you and they want you to like create your own story that you're like super proud of one day. So I feel like they will be happy if you're happy, and they'll probably come see you and you can like show them a sloth. You know, it's like kind of cool. It's an excuse for them to get to travel and see somewhere new. Too. I know my parents always were like, okay, where are you going next? Because we, we want to visit once you get settled there. And exactly. I probably talked to my family more when I was abroad than living, what, 30 miles away okay. here in Chicago. Oh, yeah. Parents all these new things. I'm like, you got to hear about this. And I have Wi Fi, so let's FaceTime. So totally, yeah. totally. Me too. Me too. made it so easy for us, which is awesome. Um, and it's one of those things where you make all these incredible lifelong friends teaching there. And then you're like, Oh no, I just have to go to my friend's wedding over in London or go visit someone in South Africa. I taught with or all these great connections that exactly. that was where you'll end up next. Yeah. It's really, it's really beautiful. It is really beautiful. 
Awesome. Well, I see that we have maybe some questions coming in. Keep throwing them in the comments. We'll be wrapping up soon. So if you have burning questions for Mira about teaching in Costa Rica, Costa Rica in general, definitely throw them out there. We are here for you guys to help you learn. Like this is more than a gap year. You can teach abroad and come back to the U.S. and then go back again. It's a lifestyle, okay. right? Yeah. <laughs> So what's your uh, what's your next travel destination that you want to visit in Costa Rica? Do you have like a hot spot that you're going to next? Um, so last weekend we went to Arnal, um, which I've been to before, but I, I love it. I, the volcanoes like really it's just gorgeous. I would like to go back to the to the Caribbean side. Um, there's a really beautiful bike ride you can do from um, Puerto Viejo to Manzanillo, and I've only done it one time, so I would love to go back and do that again. Places that I've never been, I've never been to Rio Celeste, which is uh, like on a lot of people's lists so I'd like to go there um, and but really like because I used to live in Heredia I still have a lot of friends there so whenever I can I like kind of going down to Heredia to like see I feel like they're my family like I just kind of feel like they're like my family away from my family and it's like whoop, like it's been a long time like I want to go down there and go to all of our old hot spots and things like that um, I would say Plus, like see a movie and go shopping right get all yeah. the, the oh yeah things. Exactly. <laughs> I definitely. I always see a movie when I get down there. I'm like, oh my God, I need to just sit here and like watch something for a few <laughs> hours. Um, <laughs> um, but besides just Costa Rica, like I would like to go back to Corcovado. But like I said, I've really been to like, I've been to a lot of places, Costa Rica. So I'm kind of just trying to sit and enjoy and really get to know this place and really, and but more than the places, it's just like, enjoy the friendships that I've made. And you know, who knows when I'm gonna like live here again and be able to see all these people like as easily as I can this year. So it's kind of about, it's kind of about that for me this year, I would say. I love it. I think sometimes like when you're traveling, it's so easy to think like, I wanna go here next and I wanna cross this off the list, but it's mm -hmm. like that true immersion element of like really getting into your community and embracing yeah. like that moment in the present. So I yeah. love that because that, I think it's really yeah. easy to miss it when you travel. Yeah. I think so, um, so appreciate that that insight. Um, I think we're wrapping it up. No questions coming in yet. People are loving what you're sharing. You're giving them all the great insight here. Um, we have our big film festival coming up. You probably heard about it. Oh, yeah. I am expecting a really cool video from you in the cloud oh, yeah. forest, perhaps, Mira. <laughs> and to everybody else, <laughs> alumni out there, if you haven't heard about International TEFL Academy Teach Abroad Film Festival, check your email because it is going to be epic. We can't wait to see your submissions and reach out to us with any questions about it at all. We're going to be signing off here from Chicago and down in Costa Rica. So thank you very much, Mira, for joining us tonight and uh, everybody else who's tuning in. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Hopefully I'll be down there uh, knocking on your door saying, okay, we're going to uh, do a nice little hike together. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye. Okay.